All right. So good afternoon, everyone. Today we'll be discussing the Wake High School paper. And obviously, I would love that you solve the paper beforehand and then look at the various solutions. Right? So instructions are on your screen. Please do read it. I will start with the first question. All right. Now he says the three bells toll at intervals of 12 minutes, 15, and 18 minutes, respectively. If they start tolling together, then they will next toll together after. Right? Suppose at 12 noon they toll together. First, second, third. After 12 minutes, so that means after 12 minutes, first one will toll again. Then another 12 minutes, so that means uh, in total 24 minutes after 12 noon it will toll again. And 36 minutes after 12 noon it will toll again. And so on. Similarly with the second one, it will toll after 15. Then another 15, so in total 30. Another 15, so in total 45 minutes. And so on. Then 18. 36 and obviously 54 and so on. Now they have to toll together. That means the time has to be the same. Right? So that means I'm looking for the common number here. Now this is nothing but the multiples. Multiples, multiples. So I'm looking for the common multiples of 12, 15 and 18. Now he says they will toll next together after. So I will take the lowest common multiple which actually turns out to be 90 which is nothing but 1.5. Yeah, 1.5 hours. All right, moving on. Next is red queens and black jacks are removed from a pack of 52 playing cards. So red queens are how many? They are heart and diamond, so two. Black spade and club, so two. So basically they have removed four cards, so I have 48 cards now. Out of 48, I can choose one. A, a, a random card is drawn, so I have 48 total number of outcomes. Right, the probability of getting a face card. Now how many face cards are there? Mind it, face cards are four king, right? Then four queen, but two are already gone, so two queen. Two jacks, because two are already gone, so two jacks. And uh, that's it, king, queen, and jack. So these are basically eight in total. So this is, this is one by six. All right, moving on. He says the number of decimal places are which, after which the decimal expansion of the natural number will terminate. Hmm. Okay, so obviously you can see that two factors of 10 is there. Um, right, okay, let's see. So 23 divided by 200. So let me prime factorize with the denominator. 23, 2 into 200. So 2 cube, 2 pi square. Right, now I need to make 10s, right, factors of 10. I already have 2 cube. So maybe I can multiply by 5 one more. Right, so I can have 10 cube here. So factors, three factors of 10 can be there in the denominator. If three factors of 10 are there in the denominator, that means the decimex, decimal expansion will terminate after three places. You just need to see how many factors of 10 are there in the denominator. All right. Next one. He says a jar has 63 marbles of blue, green and red. Probability of getting a blue marble is 1 by 3. Probability of getting a green marble is 5 by 9. Then the number of red marbles in jar will. Now, blue marbles probability is given. Green marbles probability is given. Can you find probability of red marble? Drawing a red marble. Of course. Why? Because I know that 1 by 3 plus 5 by 9 plus this probability that I wanted. The sum of this probability should be equal to 1. Right? So this is 1 minus 1 by 3 minus 5 by 9. So this is nothing but 1 by 9. The probability is 1 by 9 of drawing a red marble. Now, can I write the probability like that as itself? 63 marbles are there. So, that means 63 total number of outcomes. Number of red marbles, I need to find out. So, favorable number would be x. That I need to find out. This probability is equal to 1 by 9. So, that means x to 7. Option B is the correct one. Alright, moving on. Okay, the number of zeros of p of x. Now, p of x is definitely not a polynomial function here. It is something else that we do not know yet from the given graph. Also, no markings are given here. So, I am assuming that it is not continuing forward. Alright, I am assuming otherwise it is not clearly mentioned. That is one thing. So, let's wait. But okay, fine. Uh, since the... I am assuming that the graph is like this. There are no clear indications whether the graph continues or not. Since this graph does not intersect the x-axis, I can say there are no zeros. Right? 
but it depends you need to ask your teacher whether she meant to give you the continuation marks or not because otherwise it is an ambiguous question all right moving on can 14 raised by n n being a natural number n with the digit zero the answer is crystal wrong why in order for the number to end with zero there has to be a factor of 10 now factor of 10 is there that means 2 and 5 should be there both of them you can see that the 5 is absent in the prime factorization of 14 raised power n. 5 is absent, 10 is absent, that means 0 is absent at the end. Uh, Alright, you can write it in a better manner. Cool. Next one. He says if alpha, beta are the zeros of this, that means sum of zeros is given to me, 7 by 5. Product of zeros is given to me, that is 1 by 5. Find the value of this one. So let me just... Simplify it. So alpha beta LCM. I will get beta plus alpha plus 5 alpha beta. Now this is nothing but 7 by 5 divided by 1 by 5 plus 5 into 1 by 5. This is nothing but 7 plus 1. The answer is 8. All right, moving on. He says find the greatest number that will divide 1 into 2, 255, 329. Leaving remainders 2, 3, and 5 respectively. Right? Okay. So I need to find the number which divides 182 and leave the remainder 2. No, I don't like the remainder 2. I like the remainder to be 0. Minus 2, minus 2. That means this number divides 180 exactly. Right? On similar lines, I can say this remainder here is 3. Minus 2, minus 3. This number divides 252 exactly. And 329, here I have 5, so minus 5, minus 5, 324. The number, this number divides 324 exactly. So I am looking for a factor of 180, 252 and 324. I am looking for the common factor. And he says the greatest number. I am looking for the HCF. And HCF of these three numbers, you can easily find out the answer to the number 36. Alright, moving on to the next one. He says prove that this is an irrational number. Method of contradiction. Right? So, assume that this is a rational number. So, 5 plus 3 root 7 can be written as ratio of 2. First of integers, write that down. B not equal to 0. You know that root 7 is irrational, so isolated. So, A by B minus 5 whole divided by 3. This is a rational number. Rational number. Difference, that means rational. Rational divided by 3 obviously is rational. On right hand side, it is rational. On and left hand side, it is irrational. Do you think the contradiction is there? The answer is yes. Contradiction is there because your solution is wrong. Hence, 5 plus 3 root 7 is irrational. Alright. Now, he says find the zeros of this polynomial and then verify the relation. Cool. So, I will find the zeros now. So, I need to think of two numbers whose sum is 10. And whose product is 7 root 3 into root 3, which is 21. 3 and 7, 3 and 7, baby thing. So root 3x square plus 3x plus 7x plus 7 root 3. From here, I can have root 3x common. I will be left with x plus root. Plus, I can take 7 common, x plus root 3. That means my zeros are minus root 3 and minus 7 by 3. Or I can say, Minus 7 root 3 by fraction x. Right? Now verify the uh, relationship. So first of all, I will find the sum. Minus root 3 plus minus 7 root 3 by 3. So take the LCM 3. So minus 3 root 3 minus 7 root 3. So minus 10. Right? Find out negative of coefficient of x divided by coefficient of x square. Which is minus 10 divided by root 3, which is nothing but minus 10 root 3 by 3. Rationalization. So, obviously, sum of zeros, sum of zeros is equal to negative coefficient of x divided by coefficient of x square. So, write it and do the same thing for the product of zeros. Right? Then only your question, your answer or your solution will be complete. Alright, moving on. Now, he says two friends, Rahul and Dave, are visiting Taj Mahal in, in the same now, Tuesday to Friday, right? Their week is something like this. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Four days. Each is equally likely to visit Taj Mahal uh, on any day as 
on another day, right? So it, they have all the choices. There is no restriction. They can do whatever they want. Find the probability that both will visit Taj Mahal on the same day. First of all, Rahul can, okay, let's talk about Rahul. It can either go on Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday. It has five possibilities. Now, corresponding to this, corresponding to each possibility over there, how many possibilities they have? It can go on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, which will be four possibilities and five. Four. He also have four. So in total, it should be four into four, six. So total number of outcomes is If you are unable to understand what you can do is you can take the case something like this. So Tuesday, Tuesday, both of them Tuesday. Then Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Friday. Now with starting with Tuesday, we have four. Starting with Wednesday, we have four, then four again, then four again. That is why this is 16. All right. Now he says both will visit Taj Mahal on the same day. So either they can go on Tuesday, Tuesday, then Wednesday, Wednesday, then Thursday, Thursday, and then Friday, Friday. That means four favorable outcomes are there. So that is one by four. Now, consecutive days. So either it can be consecutive Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Thursday, right. Now, consecutive days means this only. They should have been more clear if they don't want to. I can't help it. So three possible outcomes are there. So, this is 3 by 3. Favorable outcome. Cool. On different days. Okay. So, that means if Rahul goes on Tuesday, Dave cannot go on Tuesday. It can, he can go on Wednesday. He can go on Thursday. He can go on Friday. Right. If I need to calculate it, what I can do is for Rahul, I have four of possibilities. Corresponding to this, except for that day, I can go anytime. Right. So I have three. If you do not understand this, you can write it down. For this thing, for Tuesday, we have three again. For Wednesday, I, he can go on Wednesday, then Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, no, Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday, Friday. So again, three. So in total, 12 is there. So 12, obviously, in total, that is 30, uh, 16, which is 3 by 4. All right. Okay. So with this, we have arrived at the end of the paper. Thank you and I'll